G'day folks. Well, tonight I'm going to be replacing the little um, protective blocks on my tyre machine. Uh, I couldn't find any rubber, like big chunk blocks of rubber around for cheap or even for free or anything like that. I just couldn't find anything. So uh, I went and saw my good friend Norm at the uh, local extrusion shop and he let me rummage through his scrap bin. And uh, yeah, I got polyethylene, HDPE and uh, polypropylene. Polypropylene seems to be the softer of the two. Uh, that's going to be the rearmost block which failed last night and marked one of my uh, Merck's rims, so I'm rather pissed about that. Well, not pissed pissed, but you know, just disappointed. I mean, it's a pretty bang up old car, but you don't want to be putting dings in wheels just like that. Um, I did get one of the tyres, I did get two of the tyres fitted, which is good, but before I proceed, um, I'll, uh, with the other two, I'll fix this problem up. So, I know someone's going to complain about using an end mill in a Jacob's chuck, but I know it's a cardinal sin to mill metals with an end mill in a Jacob's chuck because the jaws just aren't designed for side load like that. But plastics and small cuts, it's just accepted where I come from, so keep the comments about that to yourselves. You do what you got to do to get the job done. Mind you, I do have a collet set, I'm just too lazy to set it up. <laughs> There we go. I didn't want to go too low because there's a bolt there. <laughs> Collide with that one. Yeah, that did the job. Basically, he gave me just enough, which was just by chance, to make two side-by-side -side blocks to do the rear one. Bolt them down side-by-side -side with a 10 mil gap, which is just the size of my long series end mill. By fluke. I didn't anticipate that, but it's perfect. And it's got little ribs in it too, which is helpful. So that is the rearmost block done. The next one, I think I'm going to run the mill down the guts of it. Uh, it doesn't have to be that long. I think I'll part it off about there and run it down the middle to split it into two plates that can run vertically down the front of the machine. And that should do it. This one here has to come down in thickness a little bit or I won't get um, 255 or 265 mil tyres in there. Like I physically can't fit them in, even deflated, it's just that tight and it's a pain in the ass. So I have to keep the thickness of the blocks down to a minimum, but still have them out far enough that the metal edges that support the blocks don't touch the rims. So it's tricky. Anyway, let's move on to the next one and I'll recharge my battery apparently. That's the second battery I've gone through with this camera. This one does not hold charge very long anymore. Oh. I'm getting good mileage. Yeah, there's one that I did last night. Looks much better than the stock size, but I left the thing on it. That was from the innermost plate, not the outer one that's down here. That was a pain. Oh well. Very good. Very good. Another one waiting to go on. 
I was thinking about the white letters on the outside, but nah, it looks dorky on an SUV like that. We'll go with the black. Black out, pure black, no white outline. Oh, and you'll see a separate video about this, me swearing and carrying on trying to get a ball joint out. It's free, I've just got to free up the top one, drop it down a bit, and then I can reboot the other one. Oh, fun. I should do that first while it's light. Alright, well, I did a little bit more. I ended up going for a slightly bigger bit of PE because the uh, mounting pads are actually originally that long. So I'll use the other piece, but still got plenty of extra. Um, yeah. I've, all I've done is slot it down the middle about three quarters of the way through and then cut it down with a wood saw just so it didn't go flying out of the vise when I <laughs> cut part way through. It would have gotten ugly. Good for making a red and blue, uh, I don't know what you call that, packing material. <laughs> yeah, it's all oily and got stainless mixed in with it, so not recommended. Anyway, let's do a bit more cutting. I'm just going to clean these up, same level, and that'll do them. Tiny bit deeper. Easy as pie. I love working with plastic. 
Uh, it's the biggest end mill I've got. That was one of the ones that was donated by uh, my friend Ryan, a uh, Lego game creator. He sent me a bunch of stuff from the States, a big heavy box of carbide stuff and a couple of these uh, imported Tynite ones. They're just a China end mill, but for plastics they seem to rock. You just need a 16 mil chuck to hold them. I had to abandon my original Jacob's chuck and put this one in off the um, South Bend lathe, but works a treat. Considering this is just polyethylene, it's actually done a really good job of finishing it. It's not as fuzzy as I was expecting. Oh, very good. Guess I better mill down some of the red stuff now. Wouldn't be red versus blue without a bit more red. <laughs> it's almost like a Team Fortress match just without cheap hats. Alright, time for a little bit of red. Uh, I'm not going to try a full tilt cut into the um, this kind of material with a uh, Morse taper because I know this one here has a habit of dropping out when you take too much of a cut. Uh, so I've swapped over to the collet chuck but it's not really designed for these kinds of smooth shank end mills. So it should be right, the collet's closed up, it's just the way the collet sits in there. It's supposed to have a threaded end mill that bottoms out on a centering screw. So this will either work or it'll end badly. Either way, I'm going to buy an R8 collet chuck set. Most of my end mills at the moment, particularly the carbide ones, are all smooth shank. And this one is pretty much useless for them, so I need a uh, Morse taper number 3 or 4. I can't remember what type it is, but an R8 collet set. They don't mind if the end mill has smooth shank or threads. It just grips the thing. They're really good. Stop. Change gear. Oh yeah, it's wobbling. That's not good. It's not happy, I might just go down to a 12mm with a threaded shank. Ah, let's try this again. i also taped the camera to a bit of uh, metal stock, so hopefully it won't wiggle as much because I'm going to be going pretty fast. Yep, now it jumps out of gear. Yeah, this is why we got rid of it at work. <laughs> Come on.
There you go, that's how you do it. Nice and quick. Oh, I think red won this match. <laughs> now where's the shot back? <laughs> 